Good day and welcome. In today's episode, we're continuing our series on energy, focusing on fire and its impact on our communities. Fire is incredibly useful, providing heat and enabling us to cook food, but when it's uncontrolled, it can be extremely destructive. How can we prevent fires from destroying property and lives? Stay tuned to find out more. What should you do if a pan of hot oil on the stove catches fire? Share your answer in the comments below. Be sure to stick around until the end for some thought-provoking questions to test your understanding. Challenge yourself and see how well you've grasped the material, it's a great way to boost your confidence. For more videos on energy, please check out the links in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss our weekly uploads. Let's dive in. Fires are very useful when we use them properly. For example, we use fire to cook food and to stay warm during cold days. But when a fire is not controlled, it can become very dangerous and cause a lot of harm. Imagine if a candle was knocked over and fell onto a tablecloth. The tablecloth could catch fire and the flames could spread quickly, causing a lot of damage. Uncontrolled fires can harm our environment, damage plants, and harm animals. They can also destroy homes and put people's lives in danger. Even though a small flame, like from a candle, may seem harmless, it can produce a lot of heat. If the fire finds more things to burn, like wood or fabric, it can grow very large and become extremely dangerous. Sometimes, fires can start naturally. For example, a lightning strike can cause a fire in a forest or grassland. In certain cases, fires are actually helpful to nature. In the Western Cape, for instance, a type of vegetation called finbos needs fire every eight years to help its seeds grow. The fire burns the seed husk so that they can release the seeds. Fires can also start accidentally in many ways, especially when people are not careful. Here are some common ways fires can accidentally start in communities. Candles, if a candle is placed too close to something that can catch fire, like curtains or paper, it can easily cause a fire if it tips over or burns too low. Stoves and ovens, leaving a stove or oven on and unattended can be dangerous. If food or oil overheats, it can catch fire and quickly spread to other parts of the kitchen. Electrical problems, faulty electrical wiring or broken appliances can spark and start a fire. Overloading a power socket by plugging in too many devices can also cause a fire. Heaters, placing clothes or other flammable items too close to a heater can cause them to catch fire. It's important to keep anything that can burn away from heaters. Matches and lighters, if children play with matches or lighters, they might accidentally start a fire. That's why it's important to keep these items out of reach of children. Paraffin lamps. Paraffin lamps left near the edge of a table can be knocked over, spilling the burning fuel and starting a fire. Smoking. Cigarettes that are not properly put out can cause fires if they are dropped on furniture, carpets, or in the grass outside. Fuel. Pouring fuel, like petrol or lighter fluid, onto a fire can cause it to flare up and get out of control. Specially trained firefighters are people who help put out uncontrolled fires. You can say they are trained to extinguish fires. To extinguish a fire means to put a fire out. To stop a fire from burning, a firefighter needs to cut off the fire's oxygen supply. Water is usually used to put out a fire because it cuts off the oxygen and cools the fire, removing the heat from it. If possible, you can remove the fuel to extinguish the fire. But it's always better to prevent fires before they start. To prevent means to stop something from happening. Here are some ways to prevent fires. Do not play with matches, lighters, or any flammable liquids. Never pour fuel like petrol onto a burning fire. Do not light a fire on a windy day. 
Before making a fire outside, clear all dry vegetation around it for at least one meter. Keep paraffin lamps and candles away from the edges of tables and out of reach of children. Make sure candles are in sturdy candle holders and never place them near anything that might catch fire, like books or curtains. Use fire guards or fire screens in front of fireplaces. Do not dry clothes on or near a heater or stove. Never leave pots cooking on a stove when an adult is not in the kitchen. If you think there's a gas leak, turn off the gas supply and call a gas supplier. Do not use damaged electrical appliances. Always make sure to put out outdoor campfires or barbecues completely. If you ever find yourself in a building where a fire has started, it's very important to stay calm. When a fire breaks out, there can be a lot of smoke, which can be very dangerous because it contains poisonous gases. These gases can hurt you more than the actual flames. To protect yourself, you should stay low to the ground. Since smoke rises, the air closer to the floor is cleaner and easier to breathe. Crawling on your hands and knees is the safest way to move towards an exit. Your main goal during a fire is to get out of the building as quickly as possible. It's important to know where the exits are, such as doors and windows, so you can head straight for them. Once you're outside, stay outside and call the fire station or get an adult to help. If you need to go through a door to exit, always check if the door is hot by lightly touching it with the back of your hand. If it's hot, don't open the door because there might be a fire on the other side. If the door is cool, you can open the door slowly and carefully to see if it's safe to pass through. If your clothes catch fire, it's crucial not to run. Running can make the flames worse. Instead, stop where you are, drop to the ground, and roll around to smother the flames. If there's a blanket nearby, you can wrap yourself in it to help put out the fire. This works by cutting off the oxygen that the fire needs to keep burning. When you're inside a house or building that's on fire, always crawl along the floor where there is less smoke. This way, you're breathing in the cleanest air available and avoiding the thick, dangerous smoke that's higher up. Remember, staying calm and thinking clearly is very important during a fire. If you panic, it will be harder to make safe decisions. Once you are safely out of the building, call the fire station or tell an adult. Never go back inside a burning building for any reason. By following these steps, you can stay safer during a fire and help protect yourself and others. You can stop a fire in several ways. One method is by using a fire extinguisher, which can quickly put out flames. Another way is to stop the fire's access to oxygen, such as by covering a person whose clothes are on fire with a blanket. Pouring water on a fire can also help, but only if the fire is not caused by oil or electricity. For fires involving burning oil, you can place a lid on the pot to cut off the oxygen supply. If the fire is caused by an electrical problem, turning off the electricity at the main switch can stop the fire from spreading. It's important to know what to do if there is a fire, and practicing with your family or at school is a great way to be prepared. This practice is called a fire drill. It's a wrap! We've come to the end of today's session. But before we go, let's consolidate what you've learned with a few important questions. You can pause the video to answer before the answers pop up. In the next video, we'll be diving into energy and electricity, including how energy is stored in torch cells and batteries. Be sure to check the link in the description for more videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our weekly uploads. Thank you for watching, and take care.